I'm usually not one to want any attention on myself, and it was the same for my wedding day. I wasn't a bridezilla, nor did I have any specific preference on anything at all. In this video, I talk to you how my wedding preparations were and what went right and what went wrong. I've always wanted to talk about this, but six years later, here we are finally. I'll be talking about 10 important things during my wedding that I remember now and I think is really important. There will be timestamps in the description box below, so if you're interested in anyone in particular, feel free to hop on. Mine was actually somewhat a destination wedding. My wedding happened in Malaysia. For me, it's my hometown, that's no big deal at all. But for the groom's family, it was a destination wedding for them because none of them had travelled to Malaysia before. When wedding talks were on the cards, I truly wanted to get married in Malaysia. It is my hometown and I've got sentimental connections there. Also, most of my family and friends lived in Malaysia. And for those who were in other countries, it was more of a central location and it was easier for them to fly down. But Lakshman's family wanted to have the wedding in UK because most of their family and friends were all based in UK or in Europe. So there was a little bit of a dilemma there. But one thing led to another and the odds were in my favour. So Malaysia it was. We ended up getting married in Malaysia and how that happened is a whole story on its own. The standard duration to prepare for a wedding is about six months to a year on average as far as I'm aware. But mine wasn't that much at all. We only had four weeks to prepare for the wedding. Not only that, we had to fix a house within that four weeks as well. Our house in Malaysia has not been maintained for quite some time because we hardly ever go back home and every time we go back it's only for a week or maybe even a couple of days. So the house obviously wasn't fit enough for guests. Um, leave alone guess, it wasn't fit enough for a wedding actually. So we had four weeks and we had two major things to do, prepare for the wedding and sort out the house. You might be wondering why we rushed with the dates. We actually didn't rush it at all. We just had to work out everyone's schedule and everyone had to travel to many different places for work and for studies. So the only convenient date was the 11th of April of 2015. My mother and I were already in Malaysia and the groom's family were meant to come five days before the wedding and leave three days after the wedding. This obviously left my mother and I to organize everything and sort everything out for the wedding ourselves. You may think that it was stressful, but it wasn't at all. We were occupied, we had a lot of things to do every day, but we were not stressed for anything. We just had a lot of support in Malaysia. We outsourced a lot of work to a lot of different people. So they would hunt down all of the different options and give it to us and we finalized it. Like choosing a florist, choosing decoration for the church, um, preparing the wedding invitees list and all of those things. It saved us a lot of time from having to do everything by ourselves and that's the biggest thing I would say that saved us from all of the stress. I was never the kind who was always dreaming about her wedding and planning and preparing for it. It's not something that I was looking forward to all along at all. I am a planner but because it's not something that I was looking forward to, I didn't intend to plan so much or I didn't have any preconceived notions about a wedding planning or anything like that. So when it came to the theme, it was rather easy because all I wanted was a colour to match so that we had some sort of a harmony instead of a clash of the titans at the wedding and in all of the pictures. So when it came to the theme and the decorations, I just said I wanted the colour, which was blue and white, and I said I wanted everything simple and sweet and elegant. That's about it. We didn't even bother looking at the decorations or the plan ahead of time. But on the wedding day when I walked into the church, I saw a clash of colours. I saw so many different things in there which I didn't anticipate. It was fine though, it didn't bother me so much at all. I was going to have a church wedding and a reception in the evening. So it was a no-brainer when it came to dresses. I was going to wear a white wedding gown for the wedding itself and a sari for the reception in the evening. Ever since Kate Middleton and Prince William's wedding, my mother had this obsession and desire that she wanted me to wear a wedding dress like Kate Middleton's. Again, this wasn't something that I was planning about so I had no specific preference. The only thing I asked for was that the dress was not sleeveless because I was insecure about my flabby arms. So we went to several bridal stores. In Malaysia, what we would normally do is rent a bridal dress instead of buying it because you're only wearing it for a couple of hours for that occasion and you're not going to rewear it at all. So it's really, really normal to have so many different bridal stores with so many different selections for you to choose from to rent for that day. We walked in and out of the first store within five minutes. 
because everything that they had was too over the top for me or they didn't have sleeves at all. But the second shop that we walked to, into was far more practical. We looked at all of the packages that they had, but I wasn't interested in any of the photo shoot packages and the multiple gowns that you could rent and do all of those things. But I obliged because my mother's friend who came with us insisted that it was extremely important and it was memorable to do it. So I was like, yeah, okay, if you say so, I'll agree to it. Once we had discussed the packages and finalized the deals that we wanted to go with, we went upstairs to the studio. There was a glassed area in that studio which was sectioned off separately and the salesperson didn't show us anything from that glass area at all. But my mother's friend was curious about it and she asked the salesperson about the dresses in that section. And we were told that those were VIP dresses which means they were brand new and they were more expensive because they were in an entirely different deal. No one else had worn any of those dresses. You wouldn't believe what we did. We walked right into that section and picked out the only dress that had a sleeve attached to it. I tried it on, my mother looked at it, within a minute my mother said that was a dress and I agreed. But mind you, I actually didn't fit into that dress really well. I had put on a little bit of weight but they were both very very confident that I would lose weight in about three weeks or so. Would you believe it? That dress was actually a replica of Kate Middleton's wedding dress. We picked that dress up and then we picked several other dresses in the next couple of minutes for the rest of the photo shoots and we were off. That was the dress done. It was somewhat a similar story even with my wedding sari for the reception. We walked into two stores, we went into the second store and we picked out all of the saris that we needed for all of us. So I think I picked a few for me, a few for my mother and a few for my in-laws and we were done in about half an hour. I've never known myself or my mother or my relatives or anyone who came with us to have picked so many saris in such a short time. When it came to hair and makeup, I only had one person in mind. It was an old school friend of mine whose photos I have seen on Facebook. Um, I've not seen her in person. I had not been in touch with her for such a long time. And so I hunted her down. It took quite some time to get in touch with her and to connect with her once we had all of the dates fixed and then we booked and there was no time for any trial whatsoever but I just went ahead with her. Pre-wedding photo shoot is such a big deal in Malaysia. No matter what your budget is for the wedding, there will be some sort of a deal or package available for you. It's almost like it is a compulsory thing for every wedding in Malaysia. I wasn't interested in this at all as you can imagine but I got talked into it so I just agreed for it at the end of the day. In the end, I ended up with every premium photography packages and videography packages available. We had an indoor and outdoor photo shoot, we had a pre-wedding photo shoot with one set of photographers and then we had a post-wedding photo shoot with our wedding photographer. We had so many different albums of different sizes and shapes and colours and genres and everything. Thing. To be honest, today I don't even remember how many albums we have. I think the last time I saw it must have been about four or five years ago and we've not looked at it ever since. I've left it in my mother's house in Glasgow because we haven't got the space for all of this here in Bristol. The pre-wedding photoshoot album that we did before the wedding was meant to take about three months to be ready but we had everything ready just before the wedding which is when we did the photo shoot about five days before the wedding because that's when Lakshman arrived. The private studio stayed up all night to do all of our photos. They even stayed open over a bank weekend to actually do our photo shoot for us. They got all of our thank you cards and frames and everything ready for the weekend, well in advance for the wedding in fact, and I was so surprised. Wedding invitations normally take one week to be ready for proofreading and then another week or two for printing depending on the kind of invitation you select. So when we walked into the printers, I chose the smallest and the simplest wedding invitation possible because we didn't have time to wait for two or three weeks for it to be ready. There was just no point in choosing something lavish and waiting for such a long time for the wedding invitations to be ready because we had to send it literally halfway across the world to everyone. One thing led to another, we ended up with the biggest and the most lavish wedding invitation they ever had in their printers at that time. I just don't remember the details at the moment but it worked out the way it did. The lady told us that we would have the proof ready in about five days time but she called us the very next day to tell us that the proof was ready and then the day after that she had hundreds of wedding invitations printed for us. 
I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And everything that we had printed on that wedding invitation was a combined contribution of both the families. It turned out so well and it actually complemented each and everything together so well on that invitation. I was dead against spending so much money for a wedding cake. A standard two or three tier cake was about 500 pounds or so and it took ages to be ready. All of the local bakeries told me that they won't be able to fulfill my order because we were too late, even if I was willing to pay the cost to begin with. I really thought it was pointless because I didn't understand the whole significance of a wedding cake initially. But then, because timing didn't work out for us, I then decided to let the hotel arrange for a dummy cake for us instead. A couple of days later, I came across a home-based baker who made custom-made cakes. I made an appointment with her and ended up designing my own wedding cake for half the cost of a traditional wedding cake. I paid her the deposit and walked away happily thinking that's another thing ticked off my list. A week after this, she gave me a call and told me that she had to cancel on me because she had accidentally double booked herself. This was 10 days before the wedding. I now had to find someone else to make a cake for me because everyone got stuck on the idea of that custom made wedding cake as opposed to that dummy cake. I then found another baker locally who was extremely creative and he was making cakes out of the ordinary. When I spoke to him and explained the kind of design that I wanted for the wedding cake, he was very reluctant to say the least. But eventually he jumped on and then he started contributing his own ideas and trying to make it better. It turned out so much more lavish than I had ever imagined. It looked so good and it tasted so good that all of our guests were curious about it. The cost was almost the same as a traditional wedding cake, but ever so slightly cheaper, but so much more worth it. The key with my entire wedding preparation is time constraints. So when it came to the location for the reception, we were a little bit stuck. We were a bit too late and it was too short a notice to book any place really. Most of the places that were available for us for our date were empty places where we had to look for separate vendors for decorations and furnitures and food. That was going to be a lot more difficult than we had imagined. So we ended up choosing a few hotels and the one that we finalised was a hotel that we had known um, and we were quite familiar with. The staff who were assigned to us and the manager for our event was so friendly and went over the top to do whatever she could to help us. The event manager asked us if we were going to bring in our own vendors for decoration. The answer was most definitely no. One of the reasons I chose a hotel is because we didn't want to look for another person to outsource summer work for them to do and take longer time to do that as well. I just said I'm happy with whatever decorations the ballroom comes in the hotel. Um, I didn't want to choose anything. I wasn't picky about anything at all. But in the end, the hotel was so sweet that they decorated everything according to our theme and they even did a signage for us without us asking them to do it. One of the perks of arranging a wedding reception in a hotel, especially a five-star hotel, is a foot tasting. I don't think we had time for food tasting, but I remember we made an appointment to discuss on what we wanted on the menu. I said I wanted a Chinese course dinner and had specific requests for the food for each course. It was a little bit out of the ordinary for someone of an Indian heritage to have such requests, but the hotel did more than oblige. What should have been about six or seven course dinner ended up as a 10 course dinner. There's always a nagging concern on how the food is going to turn out at the end of the day. It's different when it's a small table or it's a small group that goes, and it's different when you're cooking for about 200 or 300 guests. So we were a little bit concerned about it, but we didn't have to be worried at all. On the day of the reception, Everyone was talking about the food. Everyone enjoyed the food so much. It was so fresh, it was so good. The presentation was so good. And the combination of everything was just truly out of the world. The only biggest regret I have is that Lakshman and I couldn't eat anything much at all. We spent so much time with our guests because we really wanted to make them feel welcome and we just wanted to spend time with them really. So we weren't sat at our table at all. The waiters left our food for us when each course came in but we still didn't have time to go back to it. Regardless, I've got very good memories of the food, I've got pictures to remember 
and I've got memories from everyone telling us that everything was really good and that's what matters at the end of the day. Entertainment at a wedding is so important to ensure that the entire atmosphere is lovely and lively and you know people are not just dull and stuck talking to the person next to them at their table but they're able to communicate with so many other people and that's exactly what happened at the wedding. We obviously didn't have time to think about it or to prepare for it but somehow people just knew each other and they spent time moving from table to table to talk to each other also. So not only talking to us, but they were talking to other guests. It was such a lively environment and it was so nice to see all of those in the videos and in the photos and everyone was so joyful. They were joyful for us, yes, but they were also happy to be there which made me so happy to see everyone there at that time. I'm not sharing any of these things to show off in any way at all. My only intention is to point out that I had the best of everything even when I didn't ask for it, only because God was at the center of all of it. God had thought about it through and through even when I didn't and I wouldn't have it any other way. There were many pros and cons in everything that I spoke about today, but all I pointed out, or rather what I pointed out mostly was something that went well for us, not what went wrong. If I were to be talking about what went wrong, we'll be here forever. But at the end of the day, all that mattered to me was that God was in the center of everything. It was according to His perfect timing, with the perfect person that He had ordained for me. Whoever needed to be there were there and everything worked out smoothly as far as everyone else is concerned. I'm probably the only person who can see all of the flaws and who can point everything out to you because I am an observant person and because I'm a planner. I may not have noticed God in all of these things at that time when the wedding was happening, but six years later, I would like to think I'm wiser and I'm able to now see the bigger picture and I am now able to see that God's hands was upon us in every single way possible. At the time of publishing this video, it's now been six years since the event. All I can see after these years is God's goodness and faithfulness. So many more things could have gone wrong, but it didn't. We made a lot of compromises along the way, but that's what life is about, isn't it? Had I had another chance to plan the entire event, I wouldn't have it any other way at all. What ultimately matters is the support and love that we receive from everyone around us. Wedding preparation is usually labelled as a stressful time, but it was a fun and interesting time for me, only because of the people who were around me. Today, some of them are still around and sadly, we've lost a few people but the memories will stay on forever. 